not seen. Well, it hasn't come from Passon yet. Right, I'm right. waiting on Passon. I'm right. clicking and clicking and waiting <laughs> for Passon. Right. Okay. No, man, this is – I haven't been – more frustrated with this team and with Rakan than I am right now. There were options upon options upon options. And I understand when he speaks at 530, he'll likely tell us the price tags were too high. And I understand that the opposition can controls the price tag and maybe you just don't have what they want. But you can't tell me that you missed out on David Peralta, on Brandon Drury, on Tyler Maley, on... Tyler um, Tyler Naquin. Uh, Tyler Naquin. So on, many lefty on, bats. Jose Quintana. Joey Gallo. On, on anyone that could have made you a better baseball team, they've completely resigned to the fact that this is what they are. They are completely resigned to that. See, and now, it's, it's frustrating, Speed. Let me ask you a question, though, because a lot of us have been resigned, as has Steve Stone been audibly resigned as we've talked to him, saying, what I want, you can't get at the deadline. That kind of thing. Like, this team has systemic issues, which was the whole point of the exercise we did in the last hour. Is it possible that Rick Hahn looks at it and says, you know... I uh, don't want to give up too much from my farm system to add to this team, which doesn't show me they can be a winner. Is that a rational but, thing to think? No. W- what did Brandon Drury take? What was the return? The guy's making $300,000 for the rest of the year, and, the, and, and it doesn't have a deal for 2023. The number six prospect in the Padres system. It actually took a lot. That's a pretty high price All right, so for maybe, Brandon Drury. Maybe the market was just set too high. Maybe the market was <laughs> set too high. But, but you can't tell me, Rick Hahn, that you swung and missed – on every single available major league player. You can't look White Sox fans in the eyes and say, we tried for every single one and put the best package possible forward for any major league baseball player that could potentially Hmm. make this roster five games better. Jesse Rogers reporting the White Sox are done. No late moves there. So the White Sox add one relief pitcher. I wouldn't the say Cubs that. make four small trades. I wouldn't say the White Sox are done. I think that's a little too severe. You know, <laughs> they've still got a lot of games to play. He's saying could... done with trades, oh, Spigs. They're okay. done with trades. Right, no bad. more additions. My bad. What, what do contenders look like? They look like the Twins, who added everything you had said earlier. They look like the Braves, who added Rysel Iglesias, the closer from the Angels, minutes after the deadline. Iglesias is now a Brave in addition to everything else that they added. Uh, Some teams out there going for it, like the Padres. And then there are other White Sox resigned to who they are. The one positive here, I'm not going to have to pay $1,600 up front for every possible White Sox home playoff game. There is that. Saving that money. I still think you guys can make the playoffs, man. Sure can. You're right in it with the wild card. Three back in the division. I still think you can. Although Lawrence just tweeted, let me guess what's going to happen next on the south side. Something along the lines of, we believe we're getting our healthy players back is better than anything we would acquire in the trade market. Oh, yeah, Luis That Robert. is my least. I, I hate when executives do that in any sport. Rick is, is very aware. He's done that before, and he's aware of people expecting that on Twitter. He's not going to say that today. It would be a colossal PR misstep. Oh, well, we, we look at getting healthy players back as additions. Those aren't additions. You didn't give up anything to get them. You had them on your roster before. They're just getting back healthy. Those aren't additions. Those are guys coming back. They were already here. Rick, listen to me real close. I know you're listening to this show before you talk to the media at 530. Yeah, he does that. You fire that damn manager before this day is over, and we'll start whistling a different tune. (laughs) You don't do that, and we're gone. We need to get to the uh, bottom of why Tony La Russa did not address the media before the White Sox game today. That he is, was napping. That, 20 bucks is it won't be asked. That is, uh, hey, come uh, on. That is an anomaly. That is a strange thing for a manager not to address the media. Uh, saw David Ross talking about potential trades or not in the, um, in, in the dugout a little while ago. And uh, other managers have been doing it. Very strange. And Rick Hahn will talk about the inactivity at some point. And they'll say that Luis Robert coming back from the injured list. 